After hours of tinkering, I found a geometry node setup where all I need to do is take this gap and adjust some parameters to generate stylized hair in the form of dreadlocks. Let me show you how it works. At the core of this hair generator are these nine geometry nodes. Once in place, these nodes take the base mesh, randomly distribute a number of points over its surface, and instantiate Bezier curves on top of each point. The instantiated curves are then given a radius, transformed into a mesh, and assigned a suitable material. Now if I go ahead and randomize their length, the result is a large number of hair strands where the overall shape is adjusted by the control points on the BZA node letting the stylized look to be achieved by an excessively large radius on the curved circle node. But, to convert the strands from their current simple cylindrical shape to something that looks more like dreadlocks, I need a few more nodes. Specifically, a set curve radius node, a spline parameter node, a map range node, a noise texture node, another map range node, and finally, a math node with its operation set to multiply. Here, the output of the spline parameter node is a value that increases along the length of a strand. This number is then separately passed through the map range and noise texture nodes, which respectively generate a decreasing and a random output along the length of the strand. These two outputs are then multiplied to produce a knotted dreadlock quality. I also want to add some randomness to the curvature of the strand to give the hair a carelessly charming messy appearance. For this, I need a set position node, which gets its input from a map range node, that feeds a noise texture node, to output to a vector math node with its operation set to scale. Here, the output of the spline parameter node is used, once again, to produce random curls along the length of each strand, adding the final stylistic touch to the stylish mass of hair. But there are a few things to consider. First, the size of the sculpture. The model I have here is about three and a half units in height. To make the generated hair suitable for a different size, I would need to adjust these parameters accordingly. Second, I don't limit myself to a single base mesh for the scalp. A single base mesh works fine for simple hairstyles, but if I want something more sophisticated, I take the time to experiment with more than one base mesh. And finally, I kept things simple in this video and didn't attempt to shade or animate the hair. If you're up for a more detailed tutorial that not only shows the process of generating hair, but also takes the time shading and animating it, have a look at my other video. That's for this one. Thank you for watching. 
and until next time, take care.